In information theory, systems are modeled by a transmitter, channel, and receiver. The transmitter produces messages that are sent through the channel. The channel modifies the message in some way. The receiver attempts to infer which message was sent. In this context, entropy is the expected value of the information contained in each message. Messages can be modeled by any flow of information. In a more technical sense, there are reasons to define information as the negative of the logarithm of the probability distribution. The probability distribution of the events, coupled with the information amount of every event, forms a random variable whose expected value is the average amount of information, or entropy, generated by this distribution. Units of entropy are the Shannon, Nat, or Hartley, depending on the base of the logarithm used to define it. Though the Shannon is commonly referred to as a bit, the logarithm of the probability distribution is useful as a measure of entropy because it is additive for independent sources. For instance, the entropy of a coin toss is 1 Shannon, whereas of M tosses it is M Shannons. Generally, you need log 2 bits to represent a variable that can take one of n values if n is a power of 2. If these values are equally probable, the entropy is equal to the number of bits. Equality between number of bits and Shannons holds only while all outcomes are equally probable. If one of the events is more probable than others, observation of that event is less informative. Conversely, rare events provide more information when observed. Since observation of less probable events occurs more rarely, the net effect is that the entropy received from non-uniformly distributed data is less than log 2. Entropy is zero when one outcome is certain. Shannon entropy quantifies all these considerations exactly when a probability distribution of the source is known. The meaning of the events observed does not matter in the definition of entropy. Entropy only takes into account the probability of observing a specific event, so the information it encapsulates is information about the underlying probability distribution, not the meaning of the events themselves. Generally, entropy refers to disorder or uncertainty. Shannon entropy was introduced by Claude D. Shannon in his 1948 paper, A Mathematical Theory of Communication. Shannon entropy provides an absolute limit on the best possible average length of lossless encoding or compression of an information source. Our e acute NYI entropy generalizes Shannon entropy. Introduction Entropy is a measure of unpredictability of information content. To get an informal, intuitive understanding of the connection between these three English terms, consider the example of a poll on some political issue. Usually, such polls happen because the outcome of the poll isn't already known. In other words, the outcome of the poll is relatively unpredictable, and actually performing the poll and learning the results gives some new information. These are just different ways of saying that the entropy of the Poll results is large. Now, consider the case that the same poll is performed a second time shortly after the first poll. Since the result of the first poll is already known, the outcome of the second poll can be predicted well and the results should not contain much new information. In this case the entropy of the second poll result is small relative to the first. Now consider the example of a coin toss. When the coin is fair, that is, when the probability of heads is the same as the probability of tails, then the entropy of the coin toss is as high as it could be. This is because there is no way to predict the outcome of the coin toss ahead of time. The best we can do is predict that the coin will come up heads, and our prediction will be correct with probability one half. Such a coin toss has one bit of entropy since there are two possible outcomes that occur with equal probability, and learning the actual outcome contains one bit of information. Contrarily, a coin toss with a coin that has two heads and no tails has zero entropy since the coin will always come up heads, and the outcome can be predicted perfectly. Analogously, one binary bit has a Shannon or bit in entropy because it can have one of two values 1 and 0. Similarly, one trite contains bits of information because it can have one of three values. 
English text has fairly low entropy. In other words, it is fairly predictable. Even if we don't know exactly what is going to come next, we can be fairly certain that, for example, there will be many more E's than Z's. That the combination QU will be much more common than any other combination with a Q in it. And that the combination TH will be more common than Z, Q, or QU. After the first few letters one can often guess the rest of the word. English text has between 0.6 and 1.3 bits of entropy for each character of message. The Chinese version of Wikipedia points out that Chinese characters have a much higher entropy than English. Each character of Chinese has about log 2 equals 11.3 bits, almost three times higher than English. However, the discussion could be much more sophisticated than this simple calculation because in English the usage of words, not only characters, and redundancy factors could be considered. If a compression scheme is lossless, that is, you can always recover the entire original message by decompressing, then a compressed message has the same quantity of information as the original, but communicated in fewer characters. That is, it has more information, or a higher entropy, per character. This means a compressed message has less redundancy. Roughly speaking, Shannon's source coding theorem says that a lossless compression scheme cannot compress messages, on average, to have more than one bit of information per bit of message, but that any value less than one bit of information per bit of message can be attained by employing a suitable coding scheme. The entropy of a message per bit multiplied by the length of that message is a measure of how much total information the message contains. Shannon's theorem also implies that no lossless compression scheme can shorten all messages. If some messages come out shorter, at least one must come out longer due to the pigeonhole principle. In practical use, this is generally not a problem, because we are usually only interested in compressing certain types of messages. For example English documents as opposed to gibberish texts or digital photographs rather than noise. And it is unimportant if a compression algorithm makes some unlikely or uninteresting sequences larger. However, the problem can still arise even in everyday use when applying a compression algorithm to already compressed data. For example, making a zip file of music that is already in the FLAC audio format is unlikely to achieve much extra saving in space. Definition. Named after Boltzmann's Eta theorem, Shannon defined the entropy eta of a discrete random variable x with possible values x1, xn, and probability mass function p as. Here e is the expected value operator, and i is the information content of x. i is itself a random variable. The entropy can explicitly be written as where b is the base of the logarithm used. Common values of B are 2, Euler's number E, and 10, and the unit of entropy is Shannon for B equals 2, Nat for B equals E, and Hartley for B equals 10. When B equals 2, the units of entropy are also commonly referred to as bits. In the case of P equals 0 for sum I, the value of the corresponding sum on 0 LOGB is taken to be 0, which is consistent with the limit. When the distribution is continuous rather than discrete, the sum is replaced with an integral as where P represents a probability density function. One may also define the conditional entropy of two events X and Y taking values Xi and Yj respectively, as where P is the probability that X equals Xi and Y equals Yj. This quantity should be understood as the amount of randomness in the random variable x given the event y. Example. Consider tossing a coin with known, not necessarily fair, probabilities of coming up heads or tails. This is known as the Bernoulli process. The entropy of the unknown result of the next toss of the coin is maximized if the coin is fair. This is the situation of maximum uncertainty as it is most difficult to predict the outcome of the next toss. The result of each toss of the coin delivers one full bit of information. However, if we know the coin is not fair, but comes up heads or tails with probabilities P and Q, where PQ, then there is less uncertainty. 
Every time it is tossed, one side is more likely to come up than the other. The reduced uncertainty is quantified in a lower entropy. On average each toss of the coin delivers less than one full bit of information. The extreme case is that of a double-headed coin that never comes up tails, or a double-tailed coin that never results in a head. Then there is no uncertainty. The entropy is zero. Each toss of the coin delivers no new information as the outcome of each coin toss is always certain. In this respect, entropy can be normalized by dividing it by information length. This ratio is called metric entropy and is a measure of the randomness of the information. Rationale To understand the meaning of Pilog, at first, try to define an information function, i, in terms of an event i with probability pi. How much information is acquired due to the observation of event i? Shannon's solution follows from the fundamental properties of information. i0 information is a non-negative quantity i equals zero events that always occur do not communicate information, i equals i plus i, information due to independent events is additive. The last is a crucial property. It states that joint probability communicates as much information as two individual events separately. Particularly, if the first event can yield one of n equiprobable outcomes and another has one of m equiprobable outcomes then there are m n possible outcomes of the joint event. This means that if log 2 bits are needed to encode the first value and log 2 to encode the second, one needs log 2 equals log 2 plus log 2 to encode both. Shannon discovered that the proper choice of function to quantify information, preserving this additivity, is logarithmic, i.e., the base of the logarithm can be any fixed real number greater than 1. The different units of information are just constant multiples of each other. For instance, in case of a fair coin toss, heads provides log 2 equals 1 bit of information, which is approximately 0.693 nats or 0.631 trits. Because of additivity, n tosses provide n bits of information, which is approximately 0.693 n nats or 0.631 n trits. Now, suppose we have a distribution where event i can happen with probability pi. Suppose we have sampled a 10 times an outcome i was, accordingly, c n e equals n pi times. The total amount of information we have received is, 